Big shout out to today's video sponsor, Linsol. Check out their fantastic deals in the links in the video description. There are a lot of IEMs coming in the under $100 mark with some fantastic qualities and interesting accessories. But when HBB does his collaborations, he tends to do a great job. So is the Kailua made by Triplewin or Triplewin an exception to this rule? And can it do enough to stand out in this ever competitive price segment? Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas and a big thanks to Linsol for sending out this copy for review their links will be in the video description as always and let me just get this out of the way at the start i like the kailua but i just i'm not sure that it sounds interesting enough to really be worth less than a hundred dollars now it doesn't look incredibly interesting it doesn't sound really that interesting but it's actually a good quality set and one that i could easily recommend to pretty much anyone Let's start off with the shells, for example. They're metal, they're fairly high quality. They come in several different colors so that you can get one that matches your style. They might not look particularly interesting. They have like a flat face on there and yeah, I'm not sure about the looks. I really like the colors. The white and the pinky purple is a really good combination. But the overall look is just very basic and unbranded, which some people are gonna love, but I'm not sure about it. The same goes for the cable. It's a really light, really supple, you know cable that, that, that feels like it's not over the top it doesn't feel like it's pulling away from you it is only three and a half mil single-ended but at this price range you kind of expect that it's just not that interesting it, it's nice and supple and it's it's lightweight as i said but it doesn't have any qualities that make you go wow uh, and this kind of whole theme is going to be that i compare it to the jojos which are a little bit cheaper sound way worse but way more interesting and have more interesting accessories and look out for that review because that is coming very soon. I'm going to film that after I film this one. So the same goes for the accessories. You know, you don't get a case. That's kind of fine. You don't expect one at this price range. It's cool that the Moondrop 2 2 does, that the Moondrop Aria does, that a very similar price range, the Moondrop Starfield 2 also has a really nice cable and really nice case. But obviously it doesn't sound nearly the same. And I mentioned sound, the sound is not fatiguing at all. I'll talk about the shells quickly a little bit more. The nozzle size is between short and average, meaning that they might not sit in your ears perfectly well. And the thing is, this combines with the fact that the ear hooks aren't particularly sort of tight or anything. And as I said, the cable is just overall like a little bit supple, which is really nice because it doesn't feel like it's digging into you. But at the same time, it just means that it's not sticking to your ear as well. And this goes for the shells as well. Thankfully, it is a two pin. You can swap out the cable, which I recommend you do if you buy these. You can get some nice cables out there. And I'm glad that, you know, Hawaii Bad Boy made it so that these could be a two pin because they're meant to be a two pin. I think the way that he's kind of pushing these is my first IEM and his idea is you'll probably go out and buy your first cable, buy your first case and have this as your first IEM and it just sort of works um, and it gets you introduced to buying accessories for your IEMs. The fact that these are kind of boring in their physical presentation can carry over somewhat to the sound which is unfortunate. Now I say boring, these are tuned to be relatively fun and they're just really good uh the thing with why bad boy he tunes things to be just like really good for lots of genres and i have absolutely no qualms with how these things sound there's lots of resolution it is a dual dynamic i believe from what i read it's a 10 mil and a 6 mil put together in each ear you get a really nice sort of smooth sound nothing's overly punchy i mean it's punchy enough as in there's there's a decent amount of bass decent amount of treble but nothing is attack attacking it doesn't feel like you're being bombarded with sound which is nice it's smooth it's it's clear it's fun sounding the the mid-range is there it's not super clear i don't think it's as clear as the ew200s but compared to those these are considerably more resolute they give you a lot more detail which makes itself apparent in things like uh, instrument separation uh, when you're gaming picking out details footsteps that kind of thing there's a lot of resolution to these they, they do sound good they just don't sound like there isn't wacky amounts of bass wacky amounts of treble there's not a mid-range that makes you go wow like the ew200s it's just kind of very normal it's not flat it's there's, there's bass there's treble the mids are slightly pulled back but it just sounds like good you know what i mean it's one of those things where like it's so good that there's nothing to point out which means that they're not that interesting but they're so good that like, I could recommend these to pretty much anyone. 
Soundstage and imaging is decent. There's definitely plenty of it. It doesn't feel over the top. It doesn't feel like these are amazingly good for soundstage. I wouldn't necessarily call these the best esports IEMs or these are the ones you're gonna listen to a lot of live recordings with. You can, and you know, for gaming, they're good. For live recordings, they're good. You know, that it's the same with the rest of the sound. Nothing is particularly amazing and nothing is particularly bad. It's just like good, you know? And the thing with why Bad Boys tuning is a lot of the time, it is so good you just don't even notice it. That's how good the tuning is. Uh, so yeah, this is this is another one of those things. I played a fair amount of games with these. So I played CSGO, which I play all the time. Of course, I played a bit of Battlefield, uh, a bit of The Sims 4, I know, IEMs for The Sims 4, whatever. Uh, I played some Gran Turismo on my uh, Steam Deck with some emulation. I played loads of stuff with these and just everything just kind of sounds good, you know? that they're, they're not so flat that it, these are perfect for esports and they're not so ridiculously crunchy that you cannot play esports with them. They're just kind of good in between. They're good for pretty much anything. Like, I know this is gonna come across as a particularly, maybe even negative review, but believe me, it's not. I like the Kailua. I think that they sound good, they look good, they feel decent. The fit is maybe not great, but I mean, everyone's ear shape is different, so your mileage is gonna definitely vary. Uh, the price is good. $80 these come out at, and you can pick out of three colors like you know there's a lot going on here it's just not it just doesn't stand out as something i go wow and i think you should watch the review of the jojos because they're basically the opposite of these and uh, they are i guess competing somewhat although the kylo is more expensive basically if you care about stuff being ridiculously over the top and interesting and standing out by the jojos but if you want something that just sounds absolutely great and there's no reason for you to buy pretty much anything else at this price point, but it's so boring. It's, it's, it's like buying an old E36 that someone has put the V8 from like the 5 series in versus buying a brand new 3, 330D or 335D. The 335D is going to be more reliable. It's going to be comfier. It's going to be just everything you want and it can go quick. It can be fairly quick doesn't really need any modifications. But the E36 is the one that you go, you know, that's probably gonna like break down in the next two years, but why not? It has a V8 in it. You know, it, it gets no fuel economy, like, but it's just interesting. There are a lot of people in the world who wouldn't buy the E36, and there are a lot of people who wouldn't buy the 330. So at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to personal preference. The Kailua is such a good IEM that it just doesn't seem that interesting. If he could have bumped up the cost to maybe a $99 or yeah, 109 maybe, and included like a decent cable and a decent case, then sure. But I think why Bad Boy knows his audience enough that he kind of expects these guys to either have cables and cases or to go out and buy them, which is something that you might want to do with these because they're not ex exactly entry level at $80 or whatever versus sort of a Chew 2, which is $20 or a 7 Hertz Zero, which is relatively similar. So that's my review of the Kailua. Hawaii Bad Boy has done another fantastic job on his collaborations. I don't know him personally, so you know I've got no incentive to sell these or whatever. Uh, or Linsol sponsors the channel, but I don't have to say nice things about the products. They just appreciate a link in the description. So yeah, buy them if you want them. If you don't want them, don't buy them. They're not particularly interesting, but they sound great. So. That's it for today's video guys. Please do like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Big thanks to uh, you for watching and everyone for being supportive over this transition over to pretty much audio only on this channel. So yeah, thanks guys. I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll catch you later. Cheers.